It's a favorite of Lego robotics enthusiasts everywhere. It's a staple of FLL and WRO competition. It's fast, it's powerful, and it's reliable. It is the proportional line follower. And today, we're going to be learning how to make one for the robot inventor. So sit tight and don't go anywhere. What is up everyone? It's Kyle here again with yet another video for the Builder Dude Nation. I'm so excited to be covering line followers again on the channel because line followers have always been one of the most popular topics on this channel. And I believe where we left off last time I was making a six sensor line follower for the EV3. Now, I promise that today's proportional line follower will be a lot more practical and simple to implement than six sensors, but Hey, I mean, it's not out of the question that we'll get there eventually. But you're here because you want to know how to make a proportional line follower for the Mindstorms Robot Inventor, and you're in the right place. Now, if you're an FLL participant, or a WRO participant, or maybe even just a robotics hobbyist, the proportional line follower is a great choice to start out with line followers, because it's really simple to implement. You could do it with a few lines of code. It's easy to get up and running with the tuning, and they're reasonably powerful. A proportional line follower typically can handle 90% of your line following needs as long as it is dialed incorrectly. Where does a proportional line follower get its name from? Well, the word proportional describes how it reacts to responses to error in the system, which is just a fancy way of saying how the robot corrects itself when it strays away from its target path. The word proportional means the correction that the robot makes to steer itself back onto the line is going to be proportional to the size of the error. So if your robot is perfectly on the target path, it's not going to make any correction at all. If it's slightly off of the target path, the robot will make a slight correction back in the right direction. If the robot's way out of line, that means the proportional algorithm is going to make a much larger correction. And that's where the word proportional comes from. The correction is proportional to the error. Now therein lies the fundamental misnomer of the proportional line follower. Are you ready for this? A single sensor proportional line follower does not follow the line. What? Now I know what you're probably saying. Your, your, your mind is probably blown right now. I, you might be... How do you make a line follower that doesn't follow the line? What does that even mean? So for our example, we're going to have a line of one color against some kind of contrasting surface. This can be really a whole bunch of variety of colors. In this video, I'm going to show you a black line which has a white border on either side, which is pretty standard for an FLL competition mat. A single sensor line follower, like the one that we're going to be talking about today, actually follows slightly off to the side of the center point of the line. The line follower is going to drive such that the color sensor is going to maintain a path in between the black zone and the white zone on the line. A single sensor line follower needs two distinct color zones on either side of its target path and that's how it's able to determine which side of the target path it is on when it starts straying away. So if it's trying to maintain a middle value between the black and the white and let's say for example the black part of the line is on the left side if the robot's reflected light intensity starts decreasing, then the robot knows it's strayed too far over to the left of the line and it needs to turn to the right to get back on path. The opposite is true where if the white is on the right side of the path, the robot needs to make a left turn when its reflected light intensity value starts increasing. So that's why we say a single sensor line follower doesn't truly follow the line. It's really following the boundary between the line you care about and the background around it. So I think that's enough fancy talk for now. We need to pull it back to reality. I've been throwing around this phrase target path a lot lately. And what does that actually mean? How do you acquire a target path? So like I said, you're really going to be following the boundary between two different color zones on the line. So if it is a black line with a white background, you're going to be following the boundary between the black and the white zone. That means you're going to need to measure the reflected light intensity that the sensor is reading when the sensor is halfway over the black zone and the white zone of the line. But you need to actually go out and measure this value. The way you do that is once you've opened up the Mindstorms app and connected to your intelligent hub. By the way, if you need help connecting, check out this tutorial tutorial I have here. Once that's all connected, click in the top right corner of the tablet app and pull up the port view. And this will show you a readout of all of the data on the motors and sensors right now. 
you want to click on the color sensor, whichever port it's plugged into, and switch it to reflect, that is reflected light intensity mode. And this will show you the percentage of reflected light that comes back on the sensor. Remember that a low value indicates that you're above a black surface, and a high value indicates that you're above a white or a lightly colored surface. Place the robot's color sensor halfway in between the two color zones on the boundary of your line. So in this case, it's halfway in between the black and the white zones, and then measure the reflected light intensity at this point. And this, my friends, this will become your target value. So this is the reflected light intensity that the robot is trying to maintain while it is following, and this defines its target path. I have the Mindstorms app open now, and we're all ready to start writing the code for this proportional line following algorithm. And Thankfully, it only requires a handful of lines of code. So the very first thing you want to do is define a couple of variables. And these variables correspond to the two parameters that we need to be able to tune the line follower's performance. So click on the orange variables tab, click on make a variable, and we're going to name this first one target path. And you'll notice the way I wrote this is called camel case, where it starts with a lowercase letter, and then the second word that's concatenated on starts with an uppercase letter. Anyway, so target path is going to store the reflected light intensity that we measured on the color sensor just a minute ago. So when you place the color sensor halfway between the white and black zones on the line. And once you have that variable set up, defined and named, you can drag out this block, which is a set block for that variable. So set target path to some numerical value. And this text entry is where you're going to enter the numerical reflected light intensity that you just measured. In my case, that was 70%. But that, of course, is going to vary for your robot depending on your lighting conditions and how you placed your color sensor. The second variable that we're going to make, so do the same thing again, click on variables, click on make a variable. We're making a variable for our proportional constant, which goes by a whole bunch of different names. And you can name this variable however you're going to remember it. I'm going to name it KP after the mathematical symbol for this variable. I'm going to explain in just a few minutes what the proportional constant does in more detail. But the short version is this variable controls how sharp the corrections your robot will make when it steers off the path. So click on OK, and then drag out another set block for this variable. So set KP to some numerical value. Now at this stage in the game, you actually don't know what your KP is going to be. It's an arbitrary value, so you're going to have to do a little bit of trial and error. And again, in just a few minutes, I'll teach you how to adjust this KP and get a value that helps your line follower perform best. But for now, a good starting value is just to set that equal to 1. You never want to set it equal to 0, because a KP of 0 means your robot will never make any turns. So 1 is a good starting point for that. Next, we'll go into the Movement tab, and we want to set the movement speed for our robot. So we'll drag out this block that says Set Movement Speed to, by default, it's 50%. That might be a little bit high, so I'm going to knock that down to 40% for my use case. And you're welcome to experiment with different power values, whatever suits your robot well. After that, we're going to get a infinite loop and drag that out into the project. And this is going to mean the robot's going to follow the line infinitely until the line ends and you manually stop the robot. Of course, you can add a loop exit case, which is a topic for another tutorial. And the last line of code is going to go inside of this loop block. Now, hang on tight because it's going to get a little bit complicated. This last line of code actually does a lot, but I promise I'll go slowly and explain it piece by piece. So you're going to want to go back into the movement tab and you're going to want to drag out this block, which is start moving and it by default it says straight zero. What this does is it allows us to set a steering value for our robot to drive. So look, you can define anything from negative 100 to positive 100 that defines a steering value from left to right. So you can actually leave it at the default value because we're going to plug in a little bit of math and a little bit of sensor reading into this field right here, which is what's going to control the robot's steering. So let's go ahead and do that. So we, we're going to go into the green operators tab and we're going to want to pull out this operator, the subtraction operator. So that's the first object minus the second object. So now we're going to access one of our sensors for the first time. So you're going to want to access the color sensor on reflected light setting. And what this does is it tells your intelligent hub to read the current reflected light intensity value and report that number in the place of this block here. We're gonna put that into the first field of this operator block. So we're gonna take reflected light intensity minus some other number. And that other number is going to be our target value, 
our target path that we defined before. So go into the variables tab and you're going to look for the target path variable that is just, it's just a block with the, the name here. And what this does is this calls back to the variable wherever it's stored memory and retrieves the value that you set earlier. So we set uh, the value to 70. So anywhere that you place this little orange guy will insert the value 70. And if you ever change this value up here, of course it will change it everywhere else in the program. That's the power of using a variable. And like I said, that's going to go into the second field of the subtraction operator. So we took the reflected light intensity and we subtracted away the target light intensity. And now this gives us the error. So this is the distance away from the target path. The next thing we have to do is we have to multiply this by our proportional constant which is the whole reason KP is important. This is going to scale the amount of correction that we need. So given some error, we multiply that by the proportional constant and that gives us the correction. So go into the operators tab and drag out the multiplication operator. So it's the first field times the second field. And you're going to wanna take this expression that we just made that calculates the error and put that into the second field of this multiplication statement. So we have a nested math operation. And then the next thing you want to do is go back into variables and call KP. So get the named KP block out here. This will take whatever value is stored in the variable KP and read that out and plug it into this expression. So now what we have is after we calculated the error, we're multiplying that by KP, the proportional constant. And that's going to scale our corrections appropriately to get a better performing line follower. And then now that all of this is completed, just take this entire green expression here and plug that in as the steering value for this motor. And this right here is the completed code for your proportional line follower. Attention all BuilderDude 35 viewers. I'd like to take a moment to let you know that this video was sponsored by absolutely nobody. Back to the video. Once you have all of the code written up for the line follower, that's really half the battle because now you're going to want to test it out and adjust the parameters and do a little bit of tuning. Thankfully, the proportional line follower is relatively straightforward to tune. That's because it really only has two parameters that you need to worry about. The first is the target value, which I taught you how to find earlier. And the second is what is called a K value. Some people also know this as a gain value or KP or a whole bunch of other fancy names. This is the proportional constant and this controls how sharp the corrections are when the robot veers off of the path. And if you're finding that the robot is losing the line pretty easily because it is under correcting, you're going to want to make this K value larger. So a larger number, which means farther away from zero. If you notice that the line falling is all herky jerky and the robot is losing the line because it's just not smooth and it's making sharp turns, then you need to decrease this value, bring it closer to zero. Remember what I said before about how the proportional line follower can handle 90% of your line following needs? Well, if you find you need to traverse a more extreme path, such as this 90 degree turn here, just increase the magnitude of your K value. This will increase the responsiveness of your line follower and make it able to traverse extreme 90 degree sections like this one. And if you find that your robot is actually turning in the wrong direction, so it is making a left turn to turn off the line when it should have made a right turn to turn back onto it, then you need to flip the sign of this value. So if it's positive, you can make this value negative and that will reverse the direction of the turns that your robot makes every time it needs to make a correction. It's also possible that you may need to revisit the target value that you defined for your path. And you can see this is necessary when the robot seems to not really be falling directly in between the two color zones. Instead, it seems to be falling too far to one side. So for example, if you observe that the robot tends to follow too closely to the white side of the line, you know that your target value is too high and you need to lower it down. So if your target value is 55, your robot spends too much time on the white side of the line, you might want to bump that down to 45. Tuning both of these values takes a little bit of trial and error, so you'll have to test them out, make some observations, and see how your robot fails or what it can improve, and then use that intuition to further refine these two values. And after a few minutes, you should come up with a smooth line follower that's well-tuned and dialed in. Do you want to see a line follower with more sensors for the robot inventor like I did for the EV3? Be sure to hit like, subscribe to the the channel and leave a comment below because I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in next week's video. See you later.